gospel is good news. The gospel is good news. The gospel is good news! I tell you what, the gospel is so fantastically great. It's magnificent. You can hardly believe how good the gospel is. The gospel is better than you think. Yes. And me too. Me too. We're learning it together. And so what I want to do right now is show you how I present the gospel to people in a restaurant, on a napkin, in a classroom. When I get a chance to sit down with someone, I'll say to them, hey, can I draw you a diagram that summarizes the Bible? I've done this hundreds of times, and I've seen a number of people come to know Christ as I've then had them think through a, a visual summary of the gospel. And so I want to do that with you right now. And this, these are the main elements that you'll see in my summary. Uh, as we diagram the good news, first we have to start with the kingdom of God because it's the gospel of the kingdom. It's missing in most gospel presentations in America. We got rid of our king 240 years ago. And so we don't like to talk about the king, but we have to start there if we're going to be biblical. What we want is what the word of God says, not our own opinion. Then we have to talk about the domain of darkness. You see, there's a war on. There is the conflict of the kingdoms. Most people don't understand that. We have to talk about Satan. We have to talk about demons. In Thailand, where I go frequently, everybody gets the idea of demons. In America, with their test tube culture, we think, oh, there's no devil. There are no fallen angels, but there are. And they are a part of people's struggle to understand the good news and to get out from this domain of darkness. Then we talk about the dilemma of mankind. We have some big problems. We die. We don't know the purpose of our life. We don't know what happens when we die, where we go, and actually we don't even fully understand where we came from. But the gospel answers all of those questions. Only biblical Christianity answers all the questions. So we have to understand the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and then it's important that we repent that we get free from everything that was uh, our connection with the domain of darkness, and then we turn and we believe in Jesus and we come into his kingdom. Amen. And then we partner with him and go and tell others. Hey, Daniel, can I ask you to come over here and hold on to our board? But more than that, I know that you know Jesus, but let's pretend that you don't for a minute, all right? And even if you have some questions, this is the way I share the gospel with people. So let's say you and I are at a restaurant and I say, hey Daniel, can I, can I do a diagram of the gospel, uh, the good news, to, to at least let you understand the whole thing. And then once you've seen the whole thing, then you can ask questions and we'll work uh, through it together. Does that work? Okay. So I start by drawing a white circle and that represents God. God is holy. He is perfect. And what was the first thing that God created uh, as he began to uh, bring time and space into existence? Most people have to think about it a little bit. They say, man, Adam and Eve? No, it was angels. And they were holy angels. So these circles represent holy angels. They're white. They're good. Mm -hmm. And God created the angels. Now this is going to be the kingdom of God. And it's important to understand that God rules. The Bible says, your throne, O God, is forever. The kingdom of God. And when God created the earth, he created Adam and Eve. Now, I'm no artist. You have to understand this. So very simple. But you know, if you're going to do this, you can do it the same way. So here is Adam. And he's got a big heart. <laughs> and he has a relationship with God. You were made to have a relationship with God. Then God said, hey, Adam, uh, I can do better than that. <laughs> I'll make Eve. <laughs> and you know who Eve is because she has a skirt on. Okay, so there's Adam and Eve. And God has a relationship with them. They're a part of the kingdom of God. And this is God's plan for every person. He wants them to be in relationship with him forever. Forever. That's part of the good news. A forever relationship with God. Yes. Here's the kingdom. Wow, things are great. However, rebellion crept into the world. And we had one of these angels 
that went over here and rebelled against God and his heart was darkened. And whereas God's kingdom is, is really orderly, imagine these are, these are the demonic beings. And it's an ugly mess, actually. There's no friendship. They don't get along. Uh, but they're, they're all twisted. They're angels that rebelled with Satan. And so once that rebellion occurred, then Satan came down and he attacked Adam and Eve and they rebelled against God. Do you remember this story? So uh, when they rebelled against God, a number of things happened. They disobeyed God and their hearts were darkened. Their relationship with God was, was not entirely lost, but significantly diminished. The Bible says your sins have made a separation between you and God, Isaiah 59, 2. And then they became demonized. They, they, their whole life was surrounded by the demonic. They are in trouble, and they're headed toward eternal destruction now. That's a problem. And then they said, we want to get back to God's kingdom. We are now in what the Bible calls the domain of darkness. And you might feel that in your own life. Many people live in darkness. And so they said, oh, we're in trouble. We want to get back. But they, they didn't realize that there was a huge chasm between themselves and God. And sin created this gap. And they tried to jump over this, this problem. And they, they tried many things. So they tried religion, they tried good works, they tried philosophy, humanism, they tried a bunch of things, but they could not get back to God. They tried to be perfect. They said, oh, we're not going to sin anymore. Then they would sin. I mean, they're in serious trouble. But God created you and I. He created every person as his child. He put his image on us. We are extremely valuable because of his love toward us. And he loved us so much that he sent the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to solve this problem. You're trapped by Satan. You're trapped in sin. You're under demonic attack. But I'm going to send my son, Jesus. And, and what we're going to do with Jesus, what the Lord did with Jesus, is he put him on the cross. And your sin was placed on Jesus. What's the gospel in five words? Christ died for our sin. sin. Yes! Good news! Amen. And so God has an invitation. And he says, what I want you to do is repent. Now repentance, I'm going to do a whole teaching just on how important it is to know how to tenderize your heart and soften your heart. We are proud in our rebellion. And if you want to continue to be proud, you'll probably never get it. But if we're willing to repent and rethink and be sorry and, in fact, detach ourselves from every connection with the domain of darkness, we're talking about sexual sin. We're talking about anything you've ever done in terms of witchcraft. Do you like Harry Potter? Have you messed with it? Have you tried to do spells? And everything that you've ever done, Ouija board, you name it, any connection with the domain of darkness, you have to break your allegiance with Satan. Because right now, if you don't know Jesus, Satan is your ruler. So you have to cut that completely. You have to repent. And then we believe. In over 300 places in the Bible, it's stated, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. So what happens when Adam and Eve, and when any of us do that, we are recreated with a new heart. We're back in relationship with God. Our relationship is bigger than it ever was before. We're way better off. But then he sends us back to rescue others. Amen. There's the gospel in a quick diagram. And the gospel is better than you think.